It's a privilege to introduce Reverend Seth Niker this morning to you. Uh, Seth is a reconciliation entrepreneur. He goes about making a difference through speaking, writing, and learning. He makes impact amongst his family, his faith, and the beloved community they are part of. The work of reconciliation is made a reality and beloved community is grounded and founded through Seth's creative interventions, social change, and transformation initiatives. Uh, we are busy with our Heartlines initiative when we are talking about Father's Matter, and Seth is an associate at, at Heartlines for over 10 years. He's also a minister at the Via Christi Community Church of the United Reformed Church of South Africa, and part of ministry at Church Out of the Box. Seth is married to Marisha, and together they have four children. You can see the children there at the bottom, and Marisha, the beautiful family. And uh, you didn't know that, but they are living in Los Angeles. I mean, not Los Angeles, but Lower Alberton. Seth, it's such a privilege to have you here with us this morning. And um, we are grateful to be able to listen to you and to be educated by you regarding this very important topic. Over to you. Good morning, all you beautiful people from all over the Eastern Cape. Can I get some good morning, some Khoya some some Sunny Bonanis? Look at the PE Wachlan. They look so beautiful, all of them. Look how beautiful they look there. Relaxed in their lacquer office there. So beautiful. <laughs> so just uh, if you can clock in onto your chat box right now, just to tell us which town you're from. I know that uh, like Wachlan, they, there's a lot of you there and you're not on your, on your, on, not every one of you are on your own devices. So please give it to the colleague that is closest to the computer. He can just clock in your name and think about what you're passionate about, you know? So which part of the, uh, of the, of the Eastern Cape are you from? And let's make the chat box go live. Look at that dude there, Ari Prela. He's got his brush still in his mouth. <laughs> we can't hear you, Ari, we can't hear you, we can't hear you. Mariki, unmute. They said the biggest sentence of 2020 was, Mariki, unmute your Zoom. <laughs> okay, Ari will find the unmute. So please go into the chat box, give us your name, the town you're in from PE, and what are you passionate about or what keeps you busy this morning? So let's see what do we have here. Adrian Saro and Trudy from Aliwal North. Ala, ala. Uh, but the Ari, Adrian didn't tell us what he's passionate about. <laughs> Kirkwood, Yaks, Yaks, Grobler, uh, or Dalmary, Queenstown. Please also put your passion. What's that, or what's keeping you busy? It's either a passion or you're keeping very busy. Sometimes they say passions also show themselves up as problems. So sometimes problems become your passion. <laughs> uh, in my group, I was talking about the council that I love. They're my passion. They're also my problem sometimes, eh? Sometimes, only sometimes, not all the time. Mias Notia, my wonderful family and the church. Amen. Bless you, Mias. Um, good. So please put that in. Uh, I'll go to more presentation in a mode in, in, in a time. But yes, uh, is it okay if we if we can if we can do something together? Yesterday we missed the opportunity. And I don't know how you all met last year. See, maybe you'll do that, but we missed an opportunity to grab a screenshot of all of you. So can we please ask you switch on your, 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 uh, your cameras right now. Unmute uh, your cameras so we can see all you beautiful people. Uh, yes, and look at Chris Van Zweig. Hello, Mr. Chris. And it looks like he has a beautiful office there. And it's nice to see people. So Dalmary looks like they're struggling there with the video. So they might not get onto the picture. Andrian van Toner might not get on. But let's smile. Now for Zoom, they say in the Eastern Cape, you must come close. And you must, you must don't look like you're looking at the screen. Look at the camera, OK? And this one, we're going to make you famous because Danny Moten is going to put it all over the, the Eastern Cape Synod website. I'm going to send him this one. Check, check out. Eldri Bester, she's ready with a smile. 
Okay, are we ready? Eastern Cape Senate. One, two, three. Let me hear you yes. say cheese. 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 <laughs> nice, 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 nice. So thank you for taking that moment. Part of it is obviously to have some fun. Is it okay if we sing together? Are you guys Christians enough to sing some songs? Is it okay? On a Very Tuesday well. morning, can we do can we do some worship together before I get to the serious presentation? Is that fine? Muted or unmuted? <laughs> uh, I'll say just for timing, keep it uh, keep it muted for timing, and then maybe at the end I'll ask you to unmute. Is that okay? And if you can give me your thumbs up, there's a digital place there at the bottom. Like for example, if I wanted to clap hands, I can clap hands. If I said, hey, Danny Moten is making me cry, I can laugh with crying. You know, you got all the digital stuff. So if I'm enjoying the worship, I can call some love signs. I can even blow some confetti. Boom, with the Eastern Cape Senate. Okay, so if you look at, at the words there, and maybe I'll just paste it one more time. I send you the words to, it's in the chat box. And if some of you want to lift it, uh, it's a song that was sung by Vision X. The guy's name is Julian Manuel. And I'd like to, I'd like to practice my Afrikaans worship singing with you all. Is that okay? How's the sound? Is it coming through all right? Sure, coming through just fine. And the Wachla and PE is going to be my choir. Because I know those guys can sing over there in PE. Apologies with the winter, the, the guitar tuning is a bit out. This is the chorus that we'll sing together. Hey, us on friend. Hey, us on father. We on sniper dear. Maar hey, us dar. As on stot hom nader. It's quite easy. Let's try that from the top. Sing with me. Hey, sing. Hey, us on friend. Oh, Lord. Hey, a son's father, be on sniper dear, my hey, a star, as on stotum We can sing it again. Hey, a son's friend. Hey, a son's father. It changes up here, but you'll sing. Hey, us on squirrel, hey, us on slaves, man, the envy on snoom, father and yes, rots from the Blank what a step. Hey, a stick in. We all take a Sing it from his on Squirna. Hey, us on Squirna. Hey, us on Slates, man. The envy on Snoop. Father and year, Rons van die Jewe, Blank what a step. Hey, a stiegen, Oh, wie altijd terug hier. Okay, Eastern Cape, wherever you at, let's sing out in worship and in praise. You know the song now. Hey, a song, friend. Oh, hey, a son's father, we on sniper din, maar hey, star, as on stot om nader. Oh, Lord, we bless 
your name sing. Hey, as uns gewonnen, hey, as uns leids, man, die gehen wie uns du, Vater in Jesus, rot von die Jüge, blank war das Amen. Well, I hope you enjoyed singing along this morning. I just love the chorus. A few years ago, I got to learn it from uh, Julian Manuel of Vision X, and they worked with a beautiful organization called um, uh, DTS, the Discipleship Training School. And I hope that they just fired you up in your spirit this morning, because sometimes by the time Tuesday comes as a pastor, we're already feeling like it's the weekend. But by God's grace, Jesus is, is alive and with us. Amen. We are in the Easter time and we, we can declare our Savior is risen and he's risen indeed. Amen. So thank you for this beautiful morning. It's day two of the roadshow of the Eastern Cape Synod. And believe it or not, I've had the honor to be with uh, beautiful people like uh, Jasper and Dani and Deval and Eldry yesterday and some of you. Uh, I'm seeing you for the first time today, but I'm mindful just to say to all of you, you are blessed of God, no matter how life has been over the last year. We want to thank God that we are alive. Amen. We hear, we're breathing so much trauma, so much pain, so much loss. And sometimes in all of that, we can take a moment to say, Lord, we want to say thank you. On this dankbar, on this bye bye dankbar, we say thank you, Lord, that we are together this morning and that uh, grace has been upon our ministers and our servants of Jesus. So let me cross now. I'll be doing some screen sharing. The way the presentation will go, just because it's a synodical kind of meeting, I'm not just doing a, a death by PowerPoint. There, are, there is a PowerPoint, but I'll stop at moments and have you come in with reflections. And that's where we'll make the checkbox uh, work for us, okay? Uh, so let me go to screen share. I believe I have that now. And there'll be some audio clips and so on and so forth that will also assist us. Uh, and let me bring up this uh, presentation. And because I can see Dani on the screen, um, Dani, is the, is the audio all still clear as I've screen shared? Yes, yes, it's perfect. OK, cool. So friends, let us begin. I, uh, I've had the honor, as Dani has said, to be with Heartlines over the last 10 years of my life as Your an associate. Your data is turned off, so I can't help. Apologies for that. It's busy. This uh, mobile data is speaking to me. Um, so let's go. I've been with Heartlines for the last 10 years. It's been an honor to serve them on several campaigns. And part of this roadshow, like the Eastern Cape has done before on another uh, campaign called What's Your Story? We are launching the topic and the project of Fathers Matter. And we're really looking forward to partnering with the Eastern Cape Synod of uh, the Dutch Reformed Church and all of its associations to make this, this topic land in our communities from the broad uh, place that you come from, right across every part of the Eastern Cape, all the different towns. We're wanting to bring this topic up front and center. And right there, you can see that we have an online uh, presence of the project, and it's, it's at projects.heartlines.org.za forward slash fathers dash matter home. And that link is there. Danny can also make it available to you all. And you can go and check out online uh, and read the report, read the research. So Heartlines, by way of being a servant to the church, a servant to ministries, and a servant organization, uh, to our country wants to bring this, this topic up front and center. Those of you that know Heartlines, you know that we, we talk about values-based change, values-based behavior change. 
And part of that is this beautiful roadshow where we have our host, uh, Reverend Danny Moten. And yes, it's my blessing to be here with you. And by way of a title shot, think of it as Fathers Matter Cause They Actually Do. Okay. So on this roadshow, we kind of bring in this topic, Fathers Matter Cause They Actually Do. When we think about Heartlines, Heartlines presents its work through edutainment initiatives. And again, Fathers Matter will be an edutainment initiative promoting the positive and active role of men in the lives of children in order to mitigate the risks associated with uninvolved fathers or men. When we talk about edutainment, those of you that have become used to the Heartlines products, you know we do it in print, we have manuals, we have short stories, but we also create feature films. For many years now, we've taken biblical values, put them into stories, turn them into a, 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 a film like Beyond the River, that is, by the way, an award-winning film right now, uh, giving it the best resources, but really having a, a Christian art form of taking biblical values, putting it into what we call the air attack of, of the campaign and having a national film. And at any given time, the national film at this launch can reach from 2 million to 12 million people. Now, those of you that know the power of story, we're able to utilize our movies in that way, but we don't stop there. We go further. We get, uh, we get our movies onto SABC. We get it onto DSTV. Then we don't stop there. We go into these conversations with the country, like we are doing today uh, with the Eastern Cape Synod uh, through this, this roadshow. So it's an edutainment initiative that wants to bring the, the, the matter of father's matter to the nation. And by our way of a title shot, think about it as father's matter. Why? Because they actually do. Let me step away from all the research for a moment. Any of you love your daddies? Can I get some digital responses? You, you respect your father. Your father taught you. Your father loved you. Your father hugged you. Maybe some of you didn't have your dad around. But you may have had a, a pastor. Any of you know that, uh, that you as a pastor, as a priest, as a minister of the gospel, uh, you've been a parent to, to, to people. You've been... A father to them. Now, I know that we have some mothers here as well, uh, but you know of a pastor or you know of a minister that has taken this role. So we don't mean to leave out our women, a woman folk at, in any way, right? But we're just taking into, into context that, that this becomes a personal story. So here's my dad. I think that he's quite handsome. I don't know about you. Uh, and I'm proud of my dad. I'm really proud to, to say that my father's been a father that has, has anchored with me, taken care of me, and, and loved me. And today when we, we, when we get to hang out, here's a picture of my dad about three, uh, about a few, well, not, not three months, but a few months ago in October last year. And when COVID eased out, we were able to be at a wedding together. But three years ago, my dad had a very severe stroke. And we had to really work through that time of a stroke. So as he's standing there, he looks all that well, but if you pay attention, you might see in the picture to the right side of his hand, uh, he's lost mobility on the right side of his body. And this was a hard moment for me because I really honor my father. But this campaign is personal in that way. It allows us to think upon the importance of parents, the importance of family, the importance of children, but also men that are dislocated and disconnected from the, our communities. So as we think about that, fathers matter because they actually do. We want to take the, the conversation further. We want to get this conversation happening in, in your synod, in your church, in your community, in your connect groups or your cell groups or your life purpose groups, whatever you call it. We want to get the country talking about fathers that matter and men that can be men of honor. Here's something from the um, Fathers Matter research report. And let me read it with you and then we'll take a moment to reflect. Globally and in South Africa, there is a lack of awareness and understanding of the importance of fathers being positively present and involved in their children's lives. I'm going to read it again. Globally and in South Africa, there is a lack of awareness and understanding of the importance of fathers being positively present and involved in their children's lives. So this is one of the 
the topics that came out of the research. We might see so many problems. Sometimes we might even talk about it, but we haven't become aware of this lack, of the lack. And I, I think even as I'm thinking about it now, at my church on a Sunday morning, I work in a, in a reformed church. I see a lot more women that are present with children. And I think for some of us, we know this. But as we reflect on it right now, I'm going to stop screen sharing. And I'd like you to please all go to the chat box. And as we shared that, that quote with you, please think about how does that land with you in your context. And let's get some chats going. So there at PE Workland, we'll have our colleague who's got the device to send around the device or uh, listen to the people. And please share your responses. How does that land with you? This reality of the lack of awareness when it comes to Father's Matter. Okay, I'll read it again. Globally and in South Africa, there is a lack of awareness and understanding of the importance of fathers being positively present and involved in their children's lives. As you are thinking with me and with us this morning, uh, what, 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 what pops up in your mind when you think about that? So let's make the chat box work. <clears throat> what are we aware of when it comes to Father's Matter in our community, in our church, in our context? A sad truth sometimes needs to be done Something needs to be done about it. Thank you, Dani. Dani's on the move. I think others are still coming through. Please reflect and engage and give some responses as we think together. I know there are many screens uh, that are off the video, so we can't really see you, but we look forward to some of your reflections as we think together about Father's Matter. I became a pastor because of my father's influence in my life. Wow. Thank you, uh, Johannes. Johannes. Thank you, Johannes. Johannes. Uh, dispatch Nord Voter O Kennedy. Fathers is not involved in family devotions and church going. Wow. Powerful. We are already starting to make a connection to our church activities. I see the absence of fathers daily in children's lives, kids looking for acceptance and acting out. The focus that fathers positive ten woordig sal wees is belangrijk, omdat father figure ook negatief passief ten woordig kan wees. Yes, thank you, from PE Workland. My father gave me backbone. Wow, I love this description. Chris van Weyck says, ek dink paas vandag te besig and besef nie dat hulle eindelijk afwezig is nie, Rina en Dani. The reality of fathers is that they are busy, and yes, they, they seem more connected to other things than being present with their families. Absent fathers equal absent values. Yo, fathers matter when they pay the bills, but I believe they, they are more the priests of the families. Just look at what Rian is bringing out already, the reality of the supply angle, the resourcing angle. So thank you for your responses. Those of you that are, are, are still thinking, you're welcome to, to keep it going. And as I, as I continue, please don't feel shy. As things pop up in your mind, use the chat box to let it out, okay? Let me return now to screen share. Thank you all for your beautiful responses. So, so from, this, from this space, I, I want to cross over to the national video. And as you watch the national video, I'd like it to be... I'd like you to watch it, yes, as a pastor, as a priest, but I also would like you to watch it in its messaging and think upon what catches my attention, okay? So as you watch the video, something that catches your attention, bring it out in the chat box. So let's go there right now.
Becoming a father. Wow. My memories from that time are kind of just hazy bliss. An average African man does not go to the delivery ward. I must say it was an amazing moment for me. In fact, my son was not ready to come out until I came. Raising a child is not like easy as you see when you see it, maybe on television and all that. My dad never misses an opportunity to say, you're gorgeous, you're intelligent, you are everything in a bag of chips. Having my dad around was so important because he taught me what I'm worth from the perspective of a male. My heart was broken for the first time. I spoke to my dad about it, gave me advice. <laughs> Fatherhood is less about doing, it's also a lot more about being. He has given me a lot of strength my grandpa is very nice and I love him and he's in heaven. A lot of the, the qualities and values that are embedded in me today came from mom and my dad. So if I play the guitar, uh, my dad actually plays the guitar. I like to play music with him. I'm a good footballer, or I think I am. We win against him. I'm scared of going alone at the shops. Daddy, don't leave me. He takes us to fun places. It's a great joy to be a grandparent. It's fighting on the bed, it's running around the house. When he's sleeping, I just bang him on the bum with a pillow. I try to change things. I want the best for my kids. with my mom, granny, and that's it. My father was not in the picture because when things ended between him and my mom, went and got married, so he had a whole family of his own. He had made no efforts <laughs> to try and find me. You know, was I not worthy of being found? My sister and I grew up with my mother and my brother, he was with us until primary school, and then he went to go live with my father. At the age of 15, my family basically exploded. As an intimate, ongoing presence, he disappeared from my life at that point. My father being present in my life, no ways. I don't even know him. My dad, he spent much of his time in Johannesburg, seeking for a job. I was still young when he moved from Venda to Johannesburg. He struggled to get a job. Luckily enough, uh, unlike some of my siblings, I was introduced to my father. Yeah, he would come to the yard, say hello, and, uh, and, and, and that was it. the work that I do with offenders, you can see that there's a huge gap that is missing. Like you see that a father figure is needed for them to be better persons. I don't remember much of my childhood and I think it's mainly because my mum died when I was about five, five and a half. Yeah, I think I was 12 and my dad got remarried and that's when things got really rocky. I was pretty convinced that all families were doomed to failure. When he was born, it was an amazing moment of being there in the delivery ward, seeing him come into the world. Why would a father abandon their own seed like that? Such a, a beautiful miracle. My mother was overseas for most of my childhood, so my dad basically became my primary caregiver. We had a, a, an awful three-year period where my dad and I didn't speak to each other. The thing I learned about that is it's never too late to rebuild relationships that are damaged or, or, or broken. I'm still making peace now. I mean, I have a wonderful husband with two children and I watch my daughter and how she is with her father 
and that is part of making peace for me. My dad is, he's a life changer. God, thank you for the opportunity and the privilege of being a father. If I could be a tenth of what my father was, uh, I'll probably be the best father in the world. Beautiful. Thank you for watching that along with us. And thank you. I'm seeing the chat box go. If there's anyone who, who feels at this time, you know, you'd like to also just voice uh, something to the entire synod or not, or not the entire synod, but the synod, the part of the synod that is here with us on part two, you're welcome to just unmute and give us some thoughts. But thank you. I'm seeing my dad taught me what I am worth. I, uh, and that's from Danny P.E. Workland. In some instances, Fathers in this generation are also the product of previous generation. Yes. Uh, Dalmarie for you in saying to us, uh, parents being present in their children's lives and validating who their children are is important. Relationship is the key for healthy families. Mia saying a superhero dad is someone that is just there for his family, nothing complicated. Beautiful, thank you for these beautiful responses. Anyone, though, uh, if, if you haven't responded yet in text but or, or you'd like to say something more, just to hear our voices around, we just leave a minute or two. Keep it short and sweet, right? Uh, Ari, yes, Ari found the unmute. There you go, Ari. Yeah, uh, uh, thank you very much. Um, my father passed away Sunday, and um, I had the privilege to... Uh, to have visited him from the Wednesday to the Friday. And um, there was a time what that one man said something that really touched me. He said, it's never too late. Um, my father was a, um, he really worked very hard. I, I, I would say he was kind of a workaholic, but um, unintentionally, um, I think he, he neglected uh, those closest to him. And what's wonderful, my mother died eight months ago. And um, my dad, I think after that, he realized um, how important it is um, to, to have those close to you, to hold them close to you. And we had really good, um, open, honest conversations of, uh, where he had lots of regrets and um, he, he let go of those regrets with God. And, and that was wonderful. And um, so it's never too late. Um, even if it is um, sitting with him where he cannot even speak, but you can hold his hand. That is so special. You must not let go of that. Thank you, brother. And our sincere condolences with you, uh, for you and your family, uh, and our thoughts and prayers. And thank you that uh, you shared that with us. So our prayers are with you. And let's just take a moment right now to do that. Lord, we know that you love Ari, you love his family. We know that you care. And we pray, Lord, for your continued healing to be with Ari and the family. It's not easy to lose a dad. Uh, and for whatever the pains of the past happened, I thank you that as he sat there holding his father's hand, Lord, you did the work that only you can get done. You healed the heart of a minister brother of ours. And this story he'll carry with him, even into the pulpit, into the congregation. And I believe, Lord, fathers of this generation will be impacted through Ari's story. And the reality, Lord, that you provided him an opportunity to be with his father present and you doing your work. So thank you for just your love, your grace and mercy and your continued healing to happen in the place of Ari and the broader family's life. Amen. Amen. We love you, brother. Strength to you. Uh, keep strong. And so thank you for that. And, and we've allowed that time. And I think it's beautiful. This is how God works in the atmosphere. Uh, and there's other responses coming through. Um, 
Yes, and some of it is is related to related to Ari. So I think as as we as we've, as we've watched that video, just in the general, does it work as a marketing comms? Does it catch your attention? Can I get some thumbs up? Some digital flicks? Uh, yes, yes. There we go. So we would love to to have this video come to you, where just the video itself is a conversation starter. It gets you to reflect on the stories. The guy that Ari is talking about, I know him personally, Derek Muller. Uh, and it's beautiful. Yeah, I am as an African Indian father connecting with a white English speaking, uh, grew up in Rosebank, a conscript generation, you know, as far as chalk can be from cheese. But it's amazing when we name the name of Jesus as our savior, what God can do. There's a unity in the body of Christ, amen? Uh, and so it's a great honor to work with Derek and some of the other fathers you saw showing up there in that video. So let's in return, as I put some focus now on uh, some of the elements that you saw on the video, um, and, and we do this through, through PowerPoint. And remember, we are also willing to share the resources of the PowerPoint and the video with you. And we'll, we'll get to talk in a, in a bit about what we can possibly do together. So let me just get the chat out the way here. Apologies for this. Uh, and you can keep on reflecting. So please make the chat work and you can save the chat notes as well, because I think they are beautiful reflections for us all. So from the Father's Matter research, I want to bring up this reality. And if you can say with me, say with me, no money, no daddy. Okay. And this is, this is a reality for us in South Africa and possibly even around the world that the formative research points out being able to provide is a key factor that defines fatherhood. It's a key factor. And if a father is not able to provide, then, uh, then there's a problem. To be able to provide, a father needs to be employed. Now think about that right there. If our unemployment stays at the rate that it is and men stay unemployed in our society, there's a ripple effect. It's already a ripple effect that's happening in and around. So hashtag no money, no daddy. Um, he has this beautiful image, and I hope you appreciate it, it as well. It's down to the bottom of your screen right there, uh, talking to us about there is a place in the heart of every child that is the shape of father, the shape of dad, the place in the heart of every child. And even if the research gets skewed and people will say, ah, but come on, man, you know, what about mothers? Remember, this is not knocking at the fact that mothers are picking up the slack. It's not, it's not jumping in the, in the ship with like that. We're talking about fatherhood to negate motherhood. No, but motherhood on its own and women in our community can't continue to keep picking up the slack. Some of us are making it with our mothers being present, but not all of us are. And we're men of honor and fathers of honor can start stepping up. We can start flipping the script on, on the issues that our country faces, on the issues that our churches faces, on the issue that our globe faces. Here they talk about for participants of all racial and social economic groups. So this, not, this, this campaign is not only for the township fathers. Okay? It's not only for the people coming out of Tokoza and not the people that are coming from Males Dao. All right, I don't know in the Eastern Cape, maybe we have to name other names. It's not only for the people from Malabar and we're, not, and we're forgetting about the people on the, on the, on the, on the beachfront, all right? So, so it's for all. Being able to provide was the single most important issue, ensuring access and entry into fatherhood. And, and I want you to think upon that. For some fathers, if they connected to other fathers who are doing well and they're not, and they're not doing well to provide, there's a social uh, disgrace upon them. They kind of ousted by the community. And what do they do? They duck away. They don't come around. So if you're thinking about at our churches where there might be some responsible dads who are involved and active, some of those dads who are responsible and are church going dads, they are not connecting with the dads who are chilling at the pub and chilling at the sports. There's no connection. So we're gonna to have to find how do we make that connection between responsible fathers and responsible men and those men that are not being responsible. Since provision and employment are intrinsically linked for many participants, employment has become an entry and restrictive point for access to participation with their children. In some of the contexts, we found that if the father was not providing, the family stopped access for the father to the child. If he couldn't come up with 
with the mula, no money, no daddy. Okay. Uh, there's a, a the, the picture breaks it and says, wish you were here, telephone calling, you know, but wish that my dad was present. Many children are, are feeling that, all right? But in many instances, being employed and being able to provide was the only way to actively participate as a father. So the notion of provision was upheld in cultural values. Think about this. We are Christians, so for us, it might not be in Tlawulu or, La, or Lobola, but those of us that are in the reform faith in our church, we have a specific theology. And if our theology didn't start teaching around provision, not only being cash, an endowment of economic provision, but hey, fathers, if you are present, men, you are present, you got to be there present with your emotions, present with your love, present with your activity. We have to flip the script on the way we preach. What does fatherhood mean? We're going to have to change that. Uh, we're going to have to flip the script. If cultural values negate the rights of women, then we have to say to fathers, because on the other side, some fathers are present, but they're not active. Can we imagine that? They're present, they're in the house, but they disengage. They're on their phones. They're making money. They're talking to their friends. Even if they're at the home with the kids, they don't really spend time with them. Okay, so there's cultural values. There's a cultural and societal definitions of gender roles. So because women must do this, men must do that. So can you imagine that even if a father was unemployed, he wouldn't be making the sandwiches, getting the kids to school, picking them up and won't be at peace in it. Now in Johannesburg, we know that many parents are having two jobs, but in COVID-19, some people lost their jobs. Instead of needing childcare, watch how the economic block can change. A father who's unemployed can be present doing those things that the childcare worker would be doing. But I mean, if the gender roles are so defined that if I'm a man, I don't cook, can you imagine what happens with the, with the mother in the home? These are for fathers that are actually present. So we gotta understand and, and work out how we start talking about this so we broaden the, the, the thinkings of gender roles. The legal sphere in the case of disputes, the reality is most times when there's a dispute in the family, children are positioned with the mother, making it further difficult for the father to have access. The family by extended family members and the mother herself and on the individual level, okay? I hope you all are still with me. We're just deepening this reflection. On a personal level, fathers who are unable to provide feel ashamed. Think about that, being shamed. So you're not gonna be in that social space. You won't go to the party. Maybe even because you're feeling shamed, you might not even go to church. You feel worthless, you feel inadequate, lack of self-respect, and believe that their families and communities don't respect them. It also causes stress and pressure and results in them losing authority within the household. So we think about, you know, uh, servants serving together. Now we also have to clarify, what does authority mean? How do I serve in my family? as the inability to provide prevents them from decision-making or even being involved. So some fathers, the complexity is that if the wife's father and parents is supporting their family, this father feels like he's useless. It even might tend to having irregular feelings to his wife and his own children. But these are for fathers that are currently in the house. They're trying to work it out. Imagine for fathers that are dislocated, okay? There's, however, despite the belief that being able to provide was equated to being uh, able to father, participants felt strongly that they wanted their fathers who were involved, engaged, participated in their lives. They wanted their fathers to be more than providers. Can you imagine this? While all of the research showed us the disconnect, many participants in the focus groups said they wanted to know their fathers. They wanted to see them, they wanted to know Who's this man in my life? The one guy in the video said, who's the seed donor? <laughs> Who sponsored the seed and disappeared, okay? Now, as we broaden it, it's not only about the money issue, but here we've named it again in this, in this block. Yes, there's the unemployment, the cultural factors, the systems of religion and, and government, environmental factors. We, we mustn't leave that out either because as a historicity, if we think in South Africa upon why fathers are dislocated from, from families. Migrant labor required that a lot of fathers left their home, home that they were at to travel away. I know that for my mom and my dad, while we were middle-class so-called in a, in a, in a so-called residential suburb, my mom and my dad left us with our grandparents to grow up while they went away closer to work in the town 
so that they could earn money to buy us a house and, may, and do some savings. But that meant that we were not with our mom and our dad, okay? Now, I'm still talking in a middle-class context. Can you imagine when we talk about fathers that have traveled six hours away to go for work, all right? And if we look at, at these kind of contexts, we're becoming aware that it, it, it's really a complex reality. It's really a complex reality that we are facing uh, in these times. Interpersonal relationships down to the bottom of the screen, and then the notions of masculinity, okay? What does it mean to be a man? How do we show up as men? How do we show up as men of honor? Now, I'll return here for a moment just to make it personal again to my, to my dad and our journey. And this is what I pick up. My dad made life full of experiences with the little he had. I remember he just took a, 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 a half loaf of bread, three pieces of cold meat, and, and, and a little small cold ring can to keep us going for the morning while my mom worked at the Standard Bank. And my dad turned the bush into a playground. We didn't know about swings and all of that. Somewhere out in, in South Dale, in Johannesburg, when my mom worked at a bank, he would have to go with us in the morning with her, but keep us busy the whole day. And yet it wasn't, a, it wasn't an expensive experience, but his presence, he made it happen. Dad taught us the basics of sport, of music, even reading. I mean, there's a connection between fathers and their children. And I'd like you to think upon that. When fathers don't have, you know, now they call it kangaroo care. Mothers do it, but why aren't fathers doing it? We can teach this from our pulpits. Hold your, hold your children. Change their diapers. Rub their bodies with lotion. Those are your children. Dad has been present in my life, active and making a positive influence in my life. My parenthood, my fatherhood, the way I care for my, my covenant partner, my wife and my children. My father has given, has given life to that. Not to negate my mother's influence, but he's been there. Even as a man of honor to tell me, Seth, if you flop it with your wife, I'm coming for you. Stroke and all. Don't flop it. There's a, an important role of a father. Now, for some of my friends, and watch this word that I use, my friends, like one of the guys in the video, Olifilia, doesn't have his father with him. But I have lent my father to my friends. I have a few friends that have with me for, for 20 years. I can name them. Bushle, Quinton, Olifile, and even Hubert. My dad has become a social father, a church-based father, an uncle kind of father to them. Okay? Now imagine if we can even, if the church becomes that way. Do you remember? Do, 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 do you see the potential? A pastor, a priest. Those men that are men of honor can become these healing agents in our society that is sometimes being pulled apart. Look at this text in Ephesians. Parents, now in other versions, it will say father, but the GNB is inclusive, which I like about the Good News Bible, because we also need to think about how we, how we, how we evaluate our inclusive language. Because for some people, God as father is a problem, especially when men have done so many irregular things. But if our theology is, is deep and, in, and, and thinking, inclusive language, GNB says, parents, do not treat your children in such a way as to make them angry. Instead, bring them up in Christian discipline and instruction. I leave that with us to think about. But as we do this, remember, fathers and men of honor can help us curb GVVF. Fathers and men of honor can help us curb the reality of truanting young people. Fathers and men of honor who are located, even if they may not be living with their, their families, but are invested and involved can help us to shift the negative impulses that are happening in our everyday world. I want to cross over to this poetic sharing uh, in, 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 in a poetry forum by Daniel Beatty. And his focus of this poem is about his father, but a father that he wishes he had. Um, so after this, we'll reflect together what is front of our minds. But even as this video plays, from what I've said and what the video brings out of Daniel BT, you can also reflect on the chat box, right? But let's enjoy this video together. Thinking with Daniel BT about daddy. Dad, my father. As a boy, I shared a game with my father. Played it every morning till I was three. 
He would knock, knock on my door, and I'd pretend to be asleep till he got right next to the bed. Then I would get up and jump into his arms. Good morning, Papa. And my Papa, he would tell me that he loved me. We shared a game, knock, knock, until that day when the knock never came. And my mama takes me on a ride past cornfields on this never-ending highway till we reach a place of high, rusty gates. A confused little boy, I enter the building carried in my mama's arms, knock, knock. We reach a room of windows and brown faces. Behind one of the windows sits my father. I jump out of my mama's arms and run joyously towards my papa's, only to be confronted by this window. I knock, knock, trying to break through the glass, trying to get to my father. I knock, knock, as my mama pulls me away before my papa even says a word. And for years, he has never said a word. And so 25 years later, I write these words for the little boy in me who still awaits his papa's knock. Papa, come home, because I miss you. I miss you waking me up in the morning and telling me you love me. Papa, come home, because there's things I don't know, and I thought maybe you could teach me how to shave, how to dribble a ball, how to talk to a lady, how to walk like a man. Papa, come home, because I decided a while back I want to be just like you, but I'm forgetting who you are. And 25 years later, a little boy cries, and so I write these words and try to heal and try to father myself, and I dream up a father who says the words my father did not. Dear son, I'm sorry I never came home. For every lesson I failed to teach, hear these words. Shave in one direction with strong, deliberate strokes to avoid irritation. Dribble the page with the brilliance of your ballpoint pen. Walk like a god and your goddess will come to you. No longer will I be there to knock on your doors. So you must learn to knock for yourself. Knock, knock down doors of racism and poverty that I could not. Knock, knock on doors of opportunity for the lost brilliance of the black men who crowd these cells. Knock, knock with diligence for the sake of your children. Knock, knock for me. For as long as you are free, these prison gates cannot contain my spirit. The best of me still lives in you. Knock, knock with the knowledge that you are my son, but you are not my choices. Yes, we are our father's sons and daughters, but we are not their choices. For despite their absences, we are still here, still alive, still breathing, with the power to change this world, one little boy and girl at a time. Knock, knock, who's there? We are. <laughs> Thank you for watching till that point. And we're coming to our close right now. Thank you, Mias. I see Mias enjoyed the video and, and the point of it. But let's just go to a reflection moment. What's up front and center as you are thinking right now? And this is, you know, uh, having listened to some of the presentation and beyond Daniel Beatty talking about the reality, you know, and I wonder um, beyond Daniel Beatty, when, when they say knock, knock, and the question is asked, who is there? I hope that we as ministers of the gospel as servants in the Eastern Cape Synod at our churches in our communities that we can say, hey, we are, we are here. But what's up front and sent in your mind as, you've, as we've done another piece of insert, just give quick reflections. Let's make the chat box work for us. Reflections that are staying with us. It can be a hashtag. It can be a, a, little, a little post, uh, well, a little, you know, a little tweet, but let's not make it a post, but let's hit it into the, into the chat box right now. What's capturing our imagination as ministers, as pastors, as preachers, as teachers, as servants of our people? And I love what's going on. It's like a conference in a conference. We are conferencing here and PE Workland. They are conferencing together. It's beautiful. Besef die frustratie van iemand wat zijn vader verdween het. Yes. It's reality of fathers that have gone on. Thank you, Jacques. Magda says, don't use not having a present father as an excuse, but as a reason to be. Wow. Because, and that, that points out to the replicated cycle. I become what I am allowing to influence me. And it's true. Some fathers... Uh, the, I've also seen this happen in families where the father was irregular, he'd be present, uh, but, but irregular with emotions, irregular with his presence. And then the son who becomes a father didn't want to do what his father did. So he didn't want to disrupt his family or hit his wife or shout at the kids. So he decided he'll be married, but actually not present, not even physically present. So it's not like it got better. It just got worse. It kind of 
you know, because if you talk to abuse, pe abuse people, victims of abuse and violence, they'll tell you, I can take the smack, but what I can't take is the emotional dislocation. Now, I know that sounds crazy, but it's a reality. In psychology, we learn it that sometimes I can take the smack because maybe I can get a smack back or, or, or but, but when it's that emotional dislocation, children never know where this father is, okay? So we're not saying one is better than the other. But in the reality that, that people become dislocated, town, knock, knock, who is there? It is the local church, amen, Mias. We can be fathers everywhere. So in this time, you know, as we think about it, I, I won't keep you much longer. As, as Danny and I, together with the leadership of the Eastern Cape Synod, we have a few things that we want to do. We want to we want to make this, uh, you know, the values resources of Heartlines available to the Eastern Cape through you. Uh, we envisage that we can have conversations like this. Look, the campaign is still in development. Uh, we're not at the place right now where we can tell you the movie is done, so we can start doing movie watching and where programs are both. But right here we've got a presentation that we can go on a, a few more roadshows. It might be that in your community, you wanna set it up and through Danny, you wanna say, Seth, come on by, let's have this presentation with more churches in our fraternal and you set it up. And I'm sure, uh, you know, through Danny's ability, you can see he's quite technologically savvy uh, with Zoom, we can set it in motion. And what are we doing? We're moving the conversation further. People might say, but that's just talking, but just talking about it can make a breakthrough. And then eventually as resources get built, we can start training, we can start doing more. But right here, right now, as I'm practicing with you today, as we have the conversation, we can do this with dads, we can do this with people. So let's take a moment, either by the chat box or with some responses, you can unmute your mics. Thoughts about the how and the commitment and how you're feeling about this coming through your church. Uh, please hit the chat box. And those of you that feel bold enough, I see Tanya Bota here, I haven't heard her. Be nice to hear your voice. I see Liesel. Mias has done a few chat, but I know he's got an amazing Barry White voice, a good preaching Barry White voice. So you guys can just unmute. Let's just leave, say two minutes for that, okay? Some feedback on what we think to show support. Let Danny know how we can make this happen. Danny's already put it up on the Eastern Cape Synod website and so on. But more than just the website, it's not top down. If we are working together, there's a community connection to this. So let me hear from you all via chat and your voices. There we go, Tanya. See, I told you, brother, it's a ministry thing. I saw that heart. Thank you, Tanya. Um, I think um, that some fathers are really um, ashamed, maybe, that they are not there or they uh, keep this hard, have this hardcore appearance that they have to keep up. Um, and I think if you can get a lot of fathers um, together, like a money camp or whatever, um, and they can actually share their experiences, um, maybe they will see that they're not the only one who's feeling uh, a certain way. And they can also... Um, have real empathy with one another and um yeah i think then share this with them um and maybe just empower them a little bit um and then at the end also get the whole family together um so they can also buy into the idea of supporting the father in their role beautiful thank you tanya anyone else Okay, Axel, look, it's his hair. <laughs> now, I'm supporting uh, the suggestion of Tanya. Um, I'm going to Afrikaans praat. I feel like more men by me come and the freemoedigheid have to say how they feel. I'm going to make it easier for the opvoedings process and to bring the sichtbaarheid by kinders to the family. You know, to believe that what a great impact they have in their kinders life can be. And then, of course, at the end of the Bible, and what the, what the word of a man verwag, um, the role of the father in the gezin. Um, I think, I think, naast the here is that certainly the most that the man in the house ook die leiding neem rondom um, die woord en die 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 karakter bou van die kinders. Um, ja, dit is maar my inzet van my kant af. Beautiful, Liesel. I'll say something to you all just to 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 let you know. I would love the fathers and men to be at church, even as a minister, I'd love it. 
but I've had to go where they are. So I play soccer every Saturday morning at 6.30. I have 48 men. Can you imagine they'll wake up at half past five in the morning to go and play soccer? Just think about it, right? The same guys will never go to church. So there's something about it, the way the church is configured for some men that, you know, it's either it's a waste of their time and we have to work this out. But as a minister, I don't want to see those men dislocated. So on this WhatsApp, what's interesting, we don't only have Christians. We've got, um, we've got Hindus and Muslims. They are there. And they know that I'm a minister. Now imagine, I can't get those people to a prayer place. So can you imagine we take the conversation to a group of men that want to have a coffee shop? And, and because Danny knows him, they'll have a few beers with Danny, but they don't want to, to pray. So can you imagine we can have a beer, one beer, not 10. But around the beer, we might have this great conversation. And friends, we are going to have to do things that we have never done before to reach people that have never been reached before, kind of out of the box. Uh, by way of close, because I, I know that we normally in the, in the, in the, in the uh, rhythm of the, the roadshow, we want to go to a tea break. And I'm about to close, but is there one more person with a burning? It's burning on your chest. You're saying, I can't just text it. I want to say it. Okay. Is there anyone that wants to say something? Okay, good. So there's no burning on the chest. That's good. Let me go to, to close then. All right. And these are the, this is the last thing I want to share with you as we come to, to close. Uh, and mm -hmm. it's off what Tanya just said. Uh, she raised the, the, the reality of values. And those of you that would look at the screen, Heartlines always embeds everything that we do on values. And lots of these values are about biblical values, positive presence, empathy, responsibility, okay? The presence of Jesus. Jesus' presence coming after the, the, the resurrection. I'm just reading all of the texts of the resurrection, the Emmaus walking. When Jesus was present with people, I mean, something happened. They didn't recognize him. But when he broke the bread in Luke 24, can you imagine that I might have to do breaking the bread with men, even outside the church walls, so we can get them thinking? We can do this. But this campaign is grounded upon at least these three values, positive presence, empathy, and responsibility. We need to understand that, like Tanya said, men are just missing the mark. And, and some of them, it's because of what the society has done. They are a product of the society. We're going to have to do the work to undo the learning so that we can relearn to learn again, okay? Here's some of the hopes of this, of this campaign. Uh, let, me, let me get the, the text out the way, the text box out the way here. Just one second. Apologies so that I can read this to close. But I guess we, we, you can read it uh, yourselves as well. So it is a hope to see men and fathers making a positive, a positive change, okay? Um, in, in this way. It's a hope to see them making a positive um, impact and taking an active role in the lives of children, our families, in our communities, and in our local to global everyday world. We are hopeful to see men and fathers join women in the role of parenting, leading and guiding our children, our families, and communities. The active role of men, now pay attention here, this one statement can go a lot more deeper. The active role of men and fathers may be able to right some of the wrongs that we see in our world today. It has the potential. This is not to negate women or to support this conservative reality that fathers are in charge. No, we want to flip the script on that. We want the active role of men and men of honor and fathers of honor to right some of the wrongs that we see in our world today. Danny said, I'm going to show you guys this picture just in case the other one was scruffy. There's me looking smart, you know, bow tied up. But more than that, it's about the reality. Please, friends, we want to share your details with the national database so you can be a part of this campaign across. Uh, Dani has said that we can do that. And with your blessing, we want you to have the information as the campaign builds. Let's also meet via Zoom and WhatsApp and Google uh, meets to discuss possible trainings, conferences. So we would love to serve the Senate. So if you know that there's some ideas that you wanna book a, a conversation time like this, and if, if we can help you do that through the Eastern Senate, I'm, I'm available with Danny and the team and even our local rep of Heartlines in Eastern Cape to do some of this work for you all. So with that, I wanna say from my heart to your heart, thank you and God bless. Over to you, Danny.
Thank you very, very much, Seth. Uh, just in one sentence, I want to thank you for using your gifts and your life experience, your um, insights, and um, your, um, your devotion to Christ to benefit and to bless us this morning. Uh, it is wonderful to see you in action. Uh, we praise God for everything that you've shared with us. And I think we are energized to be responsible fathers and to help others to become um, responsible fathers, fathers with empathy, fathers present in, uh, in, in, in others' lives. Thanks.